All right, guys, we're out by the main garden and the pond and all, and uh, I posted a picture of this, mostly completed, but not fully completed, over the weekend on all different social media platforms, and I got a ton of guesses as what it was, but only one was correct, and that was on the uh, Survival Podcast Telegram channel, which is where, you know, it's almost 100% listeners there. And what it is is a crimper for cover crop, and it is about dead simple. It's a piece of scrap two by four with a piece of angle iron attached to it and a piece of rope. And you want that rope, and I am alone today, so forgive any camera unsteadiness. You want that rope to just come to about waist height when you hold it. And the way it works is if this was my cover crop here, you lay it down in your garden bed, you step on it. And if you really want to do it right, you step on two feet and then you just move it about six inches forward and you do it again and you keep going until you get to the end of your bed and that's exactly what i did in this bed yesterday and i wanted to talk to you a little bit about what's going on here so if you look at they say well, there's a lot of green there jack that's all all coming back well not really because this was only done yesterday so if you look you can see this is what you're trying to accomplish right here you can see that right there and right there it's crimped and this is a crimp kiln. There's also a crimp way down there by the stock. And the lower you get the crimping done, there's a, another stock right there. You can see that's where the crimping happened. Uh, the better. And you'll actually see, uh, I'm looking for a grass here where it's done, but it's hard to see. The grass is done. There. When you first do it to the grass, you'll know, so this is barley, you'll notice it almost looks like a bruise. And... Uh, there's a lot of different strategies to knocking a cover crop down and getting ready to plant your main crops. And I'm going to talk about a few of them today. And I'll tell you, my upcoming course will explain this in far greater detail. But the thing to know here is you'll notice that you only have a few places where it's actually still standing up. And that over there, that's going to require a little bit of personal attention to get rid of that plant. Because it's so far up against the edge of the bed that the crimper just can't get in there and do a good job. Or back here behind my pipe so there will be places you have to deal with it but the rest of this is all just going to pretty much die down now and eventually it'll look a lot more like the first time it was put down i put it down with a hoe we're going to talk about that in a second see where this has actually turned brown and has gone to basically being what you want which is mulch and um i have a variety of ways that i do this and this is probably actually one of the least effective ones if used alone and it's because we are in a confined space and a very intensive cover cropping. But we need to remember, we're not farmers. We're gardeners. And a little extra attention is no big deal. I want to show you something else, though. Over here, you can see this looks like you'd want it to look. It is brown. It is dead. Now, this was also done much earlier. This was done about a week ago. So there's only a few places where you have a few stand-ups. In other words, just, you can just grab them and yank them out or twist them over by hand. No big deal. What we used for this one? A weed flamer. Now, there's an important thing to understand about weed flaming something. You can see some of the grasses are coming back here. This is, uh, again, barley. People think what that means is you just, like, set this on fire. Well, if you look, there's a lot of residue here. I want residue. I want top cover. I don't just want the important biomass of the roots in the soil. I want this. Okay, so when you go over a cover crop with a flame weeder, all you really need to do is hit it with the flame long enough that it almost looks like you wilted it to cook it as a green in a pan where it comes to that bright green color. When you do that, the cells inside the plant rupture and it's going to die. And that doesn't mean that if it's a grass, it might not have some regrowth like this guy right here did. You can see he got burned off, but he began to regrow right out of the sheath because he, he, he was never crimped. So what is your probably your most guaranteed way to do this? Come through with your crimping tool and then come behind it with your flame weeder. Do that about a week before you want to plant. And if there is anything left, it'll be little stray bits like this. And you can either knock them out or just not worry about them. You've so disadvantaged that old cover crop, you can just plant and be done with it. Now, there's other ways to do this if you don't have either of those tools though building one of these is pretty damn easy over here now this is going to need a little more attention yet but all i did with this bed was just take a great hoe, like a, gar a regular garden hoe and just kind of crimp it down with the, the hoe and then come back over and to do that 
And the same thing with that tool over there. I actually get up and walk on my beds and people are like, you don't want to compress your bed. Well, you're, when you have all this matter on it and you're only on it once a year, you're not going to compact your soil doing that. Uh, farmers that use no-till, they drive multi-ton pieces of equipment across the field. It doesn't compact the soil because we have the roots in the system and we have that layer on top of the soil. Not something you want to do daily. But what I do in a bed like this, if I don't want to flame it, and maybe I don't want to, and maybe I don't want to because... Or maybe I can't flame all of it, right? See that, that is a fennel plant that I grew last spring. It produced a bulb, I cut it, it grew back. I let it grow through the season, it didn't cut it again, I left it for the black swallowtail butterflies. When we put down the cover crop and we chopped and dropped everything to bed, I, I cut it to the ground. It grew back, a big heavy freeze came in in January and froze it to the ground and it grew back again. I want the seed from that fennel plant. I want it from his little buddy here too, but look at that one. It is so much more robust. I want that plant seed. There were about 20 fennel plants in this bed and only those two survived through that. That is my opportunity to get a more cold hardy, more perennial like fennel. So I don't want to kill it. So what do I do? I take this little hand hoe here and I'll just kind of and I don't really want to chop that much. I want to, again, just like, and it's hard for me to do this and look at the camera at the same time. I want to kind of just damage the stems. See this guy here? See that stem right there? Come on. Just, again, it's hard for me to do this. I'm not a video game player. Now here, we have a grass, and this grass has been really kind of a pain in the butt and coming back over and over to my high times I crimped it. Just jerk it out like it's a weed. Treat it like what it's behaving like. Just, you can jerk that out. But I don't want to do that unless I absolutely have to because I really want all that root mass in the ground. Now, you notice when I jerked it, I didn't pull it like I would pull a weed where I'm trying to get all the roots. Kind of snapped it like that. And what that'll do, it left a great deal of root matter. The root mass on a barley plant is way bigger than that. So I want to leave that org uh, organic matter in there to the soil. So if you do have to have little arguments with your guys that want to keep coming back and standing up on you, you can do that. Now, here's the other thing. I don't have to worry about this at all. I can plan into this. And this is part of context, which I'll have an entire chapter in my course coming out on the context. What are you going to plant? When are you going to plant it? And what are you trying to accomplish with your cover crop? A cover crop is not some like uh, macro blanket technique where you just throw down the same seed mix all the time and don't worry about it. Are you, are you covering in winter for a spring crop or are you covering in summer for a fall crop? That alone matters. What is your climate? In my climate, this plant, which is blaze winter pea that is incredibly frost tolerant, we had temps that went down into the single digits and it didn't look happy, but it survived, right? It survived and did its thing and was able to recover. But you know what it's not tolerant of? Heat. And the first couple days we get that are high 80s, low 90s, it is gonna look miserable. And the first day we get that's like mid to upper 90s, it's all gonna just die. I know that. So my context is I'm choosing species that will reliably summer kill and then I'm accelerating the kill so I can plant earlier. And we can do this in just about any climate. We have to think about the method of termination. A hoe is a method of termination. A flame weeder is a method of termination. A crimp terminator, which is in this case, just a board with a piece of iron on it, but they make equipment to do this, big giant tractors, big giant John Deere's or Husqvarna's that have huge rolls on them, that have many of these types of things on them that roll crimp. All of it works. Here's another thing you can do. You can lay down a tarp. You can lay down a tarp, especially if you kind of just knock down your crop and deny it light and it will start to die off. You can see how light colored that is compared to how green colored that is. However, this I will end up either flaming or crimping because two things. One, it's weed blocker. It's just a scrap piece I had laying around. So it's gonna let some light through but the bigger thing is if you want to use a tarp termination, you should be terminating at least a month 
at least a month before you're going to plant. So if you plan on planting January, or let's say March 15, then you should be terminating by February 15. And you want to use a tarp that's absolutely 100% sunlight blocking. You want to use a true opaque tarp. And you would do is you'd come through with a hoe or a tool and smash this all down so it's not lifted up. It doesn't give it any space to work. You want to lay that tarp down. You want to actually lay that tarp down with some weight to where it actually makes soil contact so that any of the plants that are trying to make it as they become weakened, your fungi in your soil and your bacteria in your soil will begin to colonize that energy source and start to break it down and aid that process. It's not just a denial of light. So those are multiple ways to do this. Now, one thing I want to talk about is not trying to get too smart. Sometimes people try to outsmart things and they make them worse. So there's a couple things I've seen people do building tools like this on YouTube that you absolutely should not do. Some people will come through and say, I know, I want to make sure that this thing really works good. So they'll take a file or a grinder or something and they sharpen this edge. And that's a cutter, not a crimper. You don't want to cut, you want to crimp. You want to wound, not sever. A grass, if you cut it, does what happens when you mow the grass? It grows back, right? So when you have something like over in that bed, and we'll walk over there in a second, I have primarily barley in those beds. If you cut barley, it's gonna grow back on you, right? That's what you mow a grass, especially in annual grass, you mow it before it puts a seed head on, it's gonna grow back. It's not done yet. So we wanna crimp, not cut. The other thing I've seen done, well, I know if a two by four is good, two by six is better. So they get a bigger board and they say, well, if a two by six is better and one angle iron is good, let's put three pieces of angle iron on there and they mount three pieces of angle iron. They're gonna get more crimping. No, you're gonna get less crimping. And I'll explain to you why. Think about a guy laying on a bed of nails, nails at the circus. Those nails are all very close together and the more nails, the less likely it is to go through his back. Now that dude will pretend he's some kind of Superman or something. But space those nails out till there's one nail every foot. And he lays on there, he's gonna end up dead or in the hospital at least with punctured lungs and organs, right? But when you put lots of points of contact, you spread the energy out. So if you put three kinkers on there, you're gonna get less kink because you're spreading the weight of your body across three instead of one. For that reason as well, I made this four foot long because my beds are four foot wide. If my beds were five foot wide, then I would have made it five foot wide. If my beds were eight foot wide, I would have made it four or five feet wide and done multiple passes. Again, if you spread out the weight, less pressure into the area you want the pressure in, which causes the kink. So let's talk a little bit about something like this stuff right here, which is, Actually, this is triticale. It's not, it's, a, it, it's, uh, it's barley and triticale, but these are a grass. Now there's a couple ways I can handle this. One is I can wait longer or two, I can go ahead and crimp and flame and know that I'm gonna fight it a little bit more. With winter pea, you really, if you want maximum uh, production into soil fertility, you don't even wanna let it fl uh, flower. But if it flowers, it's okay. But you really don't wanna let it set a lot of seed pods. It's not wrong. It won't hurt anything overall. It won't ruin anything. But what you'll notice when you put pea in or any kind of legume is they fix nitrogen nodules on their roots. Now, when that plant starts to go into its final life cycle, which is make flowers, make seed, make babies, it needs more energy. The roots act as a battery and it starts to draw that nitrogen and steal it from the bacteria that put it on its roots in the first place. So you're drawing down your soil nitrogen gain when you let that thing uh, go full on. Now, if I let that happen here, all the way through, the same thing will happen. It will turn into, instead of, if I cut it right now, I have a hay. If I cut it after it seeds and cures, I have a straw. It will hollow out itself. It will take the energy from the roots and to put it into the seed, right? But if I cut it right now, it'll grow back. It's the grass. And if I crimp it, I'll fight it. There'll be a lot of stand up. If I let it form seed heads, and the seed is in what's called the milk stage, and you can look up a picture of that if you need to, but it basically is, it's half form, it's got pollen on it, and if I squeeze it, it kind of it exudates some, some milky-like substance, hence milk stage. 
if I wait to that point and I crimp it, it's very vulnerable at that point. It, it thought it was about to make babies. It's begun the transition to death. It's supposed, it's an annual, it's supposed to die. It makes babies, it drops them and they take on the next, you know, they hands the baton off. So the best thing to do with the grass is wait till you're in a milk stage. Do you have to? No, it will just be easier to terminate. If you come in and you flame it, it will, if you crimp and flame, it will work beautifully. You'll still have some regrowth, but again, it's okay. It's not that big a deal. You're a gardener. You know, there's, there's, there's six beds here. Two of them are four or four of them are four by eight and two of them are 16 by eight. It's not a big deal to maintain. These are not, you know, this is another reason people say, why can't you just use weeds as a cover crop? Because I know how this performs. I know what it likes and what it doesn't like. I know what its life cycle is. I choose when to plant it. I choose when to terminate it. And I didn't do it perfectly here at all. There's no way that it might look good to you because it's nice and bushy and all, but it should be by now about that tall and be putting heads on. Why isn't it? Because believe it or not, this was planted in January. Yeah, this was all planted in January. This is 60 days worth of growth from seed. And you can see there's a little bit of weed in it. There's a wild lettuce in there. And if I dig down, I bet you I can find, I bet backside would be better to find them. I bet you I can find some little baby lamb's quarters trying to grow down in here if I look hard enough. Uh, of course, now I want to find them. I can't. But it is very weed suppressive. Here's a weed. I'm not even sure what that weed is, but there's a weed. There's some pea down in there and more grass. I just know there's some lamb's quarter in here somewhere, but I'm not finding any. And there's another little weed of some sort right down in there. But there's very little weed activity. And I'm telling you, to suppress lamb's quarter around here, you got to really suppress some lamb's quarter. There's a weed of some sort. Looks like a little pig weed, amaranth of some species. Yeah, no lamb's quarter. <laughs> the perils of live video. But anyway, um, these beds would be chock full of weeds right now. One well, of permaculture principles, if you don't want a thing in a place, you need to put something else in that place because nature abhors a vacuum. I cannot believe that I can't find any lamb's quarter growing in here. Anyway, I'm gonna stop looking for it. That's just an obsessive compulsion. And I know it's gonna turn the camera off here in a second. It'll, it'll show up, but that's getting an understanding of your cover crop. So again, context is everything. What are you going to plant next? Mixed vegetables, another cover crop. Are you just improving a bed over several seasons before you even put it into production? Are you going into fall and you're going to plant a fall crop like kale, right? Because it's a great fall into winter crop or broccoli or some other brassia. Well, you probably wouldn't want to use a brassia and you want to use something that as soon as that cold weather comes, even if you've terminated it, whatever grow back you're getting, it's like, I'm out boss, I'm done. Context is everything. It's the most important part of cover cropping. And it is the least paid attention to. Everybody just wants to know what mix do I throw down? What mix do I throw down? And the reason people don't give you an answer that know what the answer is, is because they know that that answer will change. There we go. I knew it. Look, baby little amaranths. Mmm, delicious. Micro amar or, or uh, baby, uh, I'm sorry, baby lamb's quarters. Micro green lamb's quarters there. There's a whole bunch of them. There's probably a plant here that just there's a bunch. Look. Now imagine how far this would be along as a weed if this wasn't here. That's part of context. What are you competing with? I knew that this is one of my biggest weeds back here in this part of the property. Hey, Bubby, the neighbor's dog. Anyway, I knew this was one of my biggest weed issues on this part of the property. Now, I actually consider this a delicious plant to eat, but it is what it is. And I, a weed is simply something that is where you don't want it when you don't want it there. All right? so why I might like this when it's like this, I don't want giant ones of these dropping billions of seeds on me. So I need something that was strong enough to outcompete it and when we terminate this, this will be easy to take care of because I'm able to pull those roots and all out like that. And I'm not gonna do any more of that because I'm gonna let this grow a little bit in the shade. It'll be really tender and sweet. 
and we'll add those to a salad before we terminate because this is going to get terminated in another few weeks and most of this is actually just going to be winter cover crop i'm sorry summer cover crop summer cover crops it'll be a mix of things like sunflower and buckwheat and cowpea because these beds are really pathetic the quality of soil i was able to obtain for them and uh, they've been here a while they were supposed to be perennial beds uh, some things didn't get done because i got other things going on and they never got developed the way that those beds have so what they're going to be mostly this year is an insect nectary that will benefit that garden over there and we'll transition them from there though there's some things already going on here and then i do need to wrap up and get on with the podcast today which is not about cover crops it's about bitcoin um this bed is going to be an asparagus bed and we got one little asparagus already coming up and when we clear this out around him or her <laughs> she'll go ape shit because all her competition is going to drop away and there's more crumbs planted in here but we'll see how many come up one thing i found with when you buy asparagus crumbs roots call them what you want to in a store that a lot of times a lot of them are dead so uh we'll see how they do but i'll keep adding them and this will be a this is going to be a asparagus bed and it's going to have a plant called ivy gourd which is like a perennial cucumber going over that arch but there you go if you've ever wanted to understand well how do i get this cover crop down so i can plant into it so it looks like this without bringing out the rototiller you got lots of options and i'll tell you something about them they're all better every one of them is better than tillage because let us at the end here just look at this soil now this soil when i got it was just as crappy as the soil on those beds over there i want to get light where you can see it what you're looking at for it there is the spheres of soil you've got a gratosphere here you got soil that can be infiltrated into i wish they had smell -o vision you could smell it. it's a crumb like structure it's very dark it's very black it is very happy why would i want to mess that up this soil is full of fungi and beneficial bacteria. Why would I want to ruin their world and burn their bodies for one season when they will work for me as long as I take care of them? And the answer is I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to do that at all. I'll catch you guys on another one soon.